related um, to the to organizations and systems approaches. And uh, today, uh, John Mortimer and Samiana Pei, uh, team members of the organizations hub, will facilitate uh, this session. Uh, we will be sharing the link um, to the mural board, but uh, just to give you an idea, uh, it will be organized uh, in the following way. Uh, first, uh, we will have uh, different, uh, four different questions um, to generate discussion. Um, uh, this would have uh, this will happen during the first uh, 60 minutes and then uh, we will be divided in breakout rooms uh, where we will be able to explore more practical questions and uh, you will have the opportunity to share um some questions and uh, uh, related to, to your to your experience and finally we will uh, wrap up uh, and we'll be grateful if you can provide uh, feedback So now maybe we can start with the four questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello everybody. It's good to see you. Um, some of you I've already met and some of you I haven't. Um, so my name is John Mortimer and um, uh, what we're gonna be doing today is exploring a little bit further about systems thinking in organizations we're going to explore that so this is a sort of a general overview and getting into some of the details um, and particularly uh, th this will be this will be very interactive in terms of there's a lot of feedback and a lot of engagement from yourselves at this in, in this particular session so what we're going to be doing is please go into the chat have a look at the get the link from Miro because you will be going into the board if you haven't already done that and the first four um the first four questions are we're going to go through each question step by step it's going to take about 55 minutes and um uh what we're going to do is we've got We've got four different areas of organizations. So the first, what we're going to do is we're going to go through those questions and we would like you to put down, taking a post-it and putting down a comment or a phrase uh, with regard to that question that it relates to you, relates to your experience or something that you're interested in doing. So think about what does systems thinking mean in the context of organizations with regard to uh, purpose uh, so purpose is an important part of an organization it's important part of systems thinking so what does systems thinking approach change for organizations with regard to purpose just stick a take a post-it and start writing and if you have any questions, please stick it in the chat and we will endeavor to help you out. We'll have a total of 15 minutes uh, for this exercise. And after about 10 minutes, we will stop and we will go over what people have written.
Um, if anyone has any questions with regard to doing this exercise, if you're um, a bit stuck or you're not sure, um, please ask in the chat. Um, and the activity is still happening in terms of people writing, so we will we will stop in a couple of minutes and then review what people have written. Um, Sheba, you just asked a question about what is the topic under discussion. Uh, how does systems approach change our understanding of an organization's purpose? And people have been posting up the um, what they th what they think about that question just on the board. And we're just about to we're just about to finish and go through some of these things. So. For the people that have already finished, if you just have, you know, you read through what other people have put and we'll go through them. Uh, we'll probably start doing that now because I think most people have put something down. OK, good. Right. So um, part of this is obviously to put your views down, but it's also to see what other people have put and to see if there are common links and other things like that. So what I'm going to do is start on the left hand side and just go through um, the other the organization's purpose connects to other systems and ecosystems there could be multiple perspectives on the organizational purposes raise awareness of how far purpose and other structural elements of the organization align and hence support or weaken each other and tie to each other goodness that's an interesting one uh, for whoever wrote that one do you want to just unmute yourself and just uh, explain a little bit about what was behind you writing that one? Um, and I'll just go and do some more. It could help them to develop a broader understanding of their influence and place in the world. And from this, a broader purpose beyond that of just making their customers happy. It's derived from collective and focused on the end user, customer, client. Whoever wrote that one, would you be able to unmute yourself and just say a little bit more about your thoughts behind writing that one? That was that was me, actually, John. Um, OK. So I think our, our identity as an organization and thus our framing of our purpose is always going to be constructed out of our understanding of kind of where we are and the world and I guess in the level of awareness of our organization should we say um, and how we're, we're understanding ourselves so here it's saying if we can get this kind of 
systems awareness that this organization is part of these broader systems and the influence in that, then we can start to construct a, a broader sense of identity and purpose to the organization beyond, you know, we make these customers happy or we help this client do this. It's more like this is the influence we have in the world because we're aware of the systems we're part of and from that a, a broader purpose statement to the organization. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, Joss. And what's interesting is a lot of people, I'm just looking at the left-hand side towards the bottom, um, the role of the organization in the system as well as other actors. Um, understanding what matters to people and therefore the purpose that reflects this. So how does it serve the whole planet's living system? Uh, of each sub, uh, subsystem or members and someone else has written about stakeholders. So there seems to be an emerging theme here that this is about connecting externally um, local and global relevance um, so how does your organization serve the larger system in which it is embedded whoever wrote that one or wrote one similar do you want to just uh, unmute yourself and just talk about that how does our organization serve the larger system in which it is embedded Um, yes, I wrote that one mm -hmm. um, because um, I'm thinking about this maybe holacracy or sociocracy um, where when you create working groups, um, you try to define a purpose for each working groups and um, mm -hmm. see how it uh, serves the whole movement or organization. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. That's really interesting. And it's right next to it is how is the real purpose different from the officially declared purpose? Who put that one? And would you like to just quickly unmute yourself? Um, yeah, that's me again. <laughs> um, that's pretty much just um, from Donella Meadows uh, thinking in systems uh -huh. book. Okay, so that's that seems to be comparing the, the, the mission statements or vision statements that, that organizations like to project compared to the actual purpose that they serve. Okay, fantastic. Well, we've come to uh, 15 minutes. So what I think uh, would be appropriate is to uh, leave those there and to ask Sanjana to take the lead on the next question. So uh, Sanjana, would you like to unmute yourself, please, and proceed to do that? Yeah, sounds good. Nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm with John. I'm also one of the core team members of the organization's hubs. So it's good to have everyone here and kick off um, the hub in this way. So if we can move to the next question that we have. So the question prior was about um, purpose within an organization. Now this one is going into more strategy. So the question that we're asking here is how do you think a systems approach would change organizational strategy? Um, and then along the sides of these pictures, we have put a few examples of a few ways that you can think of this, um, but feel free to go ahead and drop in whatever comes to mind. And we'll follow the same format um, as we did for the prior question, so maybe around like five to six minutes of jotting down notes, um, sticky notes, and then we'll go through and review.
As people are continue to jot down their thoughts, we'll give it a few more minutes. Okay, awesome. Feel free to continue uh, writing, but I'm going to start to go around the picture to review what everyone's written. So it's the first thing that I'm seeing on the top left is no silver bullet solutions. I think this is an interesting one, especially since organizations might have a strategy that uh, maybe would work in very like discrete situations, but not necessarily for the complexity that organizations or um, working in their ecosystem actually needs. Um, does anyone want to speak to that, either the person who wrote it or anyone else who wants to comment on that? If not, we can keep going. Um, feedback loops internally and externally. Becoming uh, focused on internal culture, on internal relationships as key to support external goals and mission. I think that's also a great one. So organizations like having to re reflect um, the changes that they want to make um, and looking more internally. Does anyone want to speak to that one? Okay, because shy group. <laughs> it's okay, we can keep going. Identifying leverage points um, to build projects with the uh, with the most impact on where we want to act. Um, so, kind of understanding what is able to be able to flip in order to create the desired outcomes um, and prioritizing that way. And about side effects, uh, another one about leverage points, another one about feedback loops, experimenting using systems mapping, using iceberg model, adaptive cycles. Yeah, here around the top, I'm seeing a lot of stuff around um, using uh, systems th theories or techniques, whether that's you know mapping or um, identifying mental models or leverage points um, to integrate within an organization towards their strategy. So again, open to discussion if anyone wants to comment on that as well, either the people who wrote it or the ones who just wanted to comment on it and think those points are interesting. Um, I've put a bunch of them you mentioned, mm -hmm. and I uh, just wanted to say thank you to this awesome um, YouTube playlist that uh, Systems Innovation has produced. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's actually how I learned about Systems Innovation too. Was <laughs> definitely spent a few hours just on, on autoplay going through those. Okay. Let's continue going through these. 
interdisciplinary work. Yep. Um, reframing possibility as a long-term result emerging from symbiosis. Strategies are not preconceived, but based on things that are emerging as part of the process. So also um, focusing less on control and understanding concept of emergence when you use these strategies. Or the flux of organizations and analyze who's in charge of each and where it is affecting strategy as dialogue and participatory rather than a result in paper with both in internal and external stakeholders. That's interesting. Does, does someone want to speak about that? And maybe the traps that strategy, <laughs> you know, traditionally when not using a systems approach might fall into where, you know, it might be like a pile of papers that sits on someone's desk. Um, If not, I'll continue reading some of these comments. Um, allows organizations to better understand the dependencies of each system and domain to better organize teams to work with less siloing, more relevance. Taking holistic view of strategy, identifies synergies, improves outcomes, helps alignment and understanding, rely less on data and prognosis and more room for reflection. Um, of data and intuition. That's also an interesting one if anyone wants to comment on that. Yeah. I thought it was cool and, oh, did someone go off mute for a second? Hi, yeah, it's Harinda. Oh. I just want to break mm -hmm. up um, you speaking to <laughs> a quiet yeah. room really. Um, I think there's <laughs> really interesting points there. Uh, and I, for me, it's really about when any strategy is devised, it's usually with measures. And even when we do a theory of change, it's getting mm -hmm. to the measures because there's this commitment to, to really demonstrating outcomes and measures, but not necessarily being comfortable with knowing that actually it's a learning process and some of the assumptions we make might be need to be tested and might prove to be wrong. So I think it's that flexibility and just being really open to when you devise a strategy, you might not know the right answer. And, that, and that's a real challenge because in my organization, 20 years on, I just find every strategy around it's about demonstrating our impact and demonstrating that we've met our outcomes, but actually that's not really feasible. Yeah, that's a great point yeah, where it's um, trying to, instead of trying to go for um, like everything you need to do needs to align to these few specific measures, actually thinking about um, continuous improvement and learning um, and actually being able to experiment and using those measures, even if they might not necessarily look <laughs> the way that leadership wants or it's not hitting, you know, those those targets. It's, or just being yeah. comfortable <laughs> yeah. that actually we might not be meeting the original outcomes and measures that mm -hmm. we identified because what we're learning shows it's moving in a different direction. And I think I've just realized we tend to just want to keep going with the same outcomes, even though we know that's kind of not what we're identifying. And, and that's really challenging, I think, for, mm -hmm. for senior managers and executives. It's quite difficult to try and move away from a strategy that they feel they've used a lot of data and insight to come up with but actually you know the world's moving at a really fast pace uh, things are changing really quickly and it's just how do you keep pace with that yeah yeah absolutely like maybe incorporating or like a reflective or feedback process i'll do is also to assess yeah. is this the way you want to go and realizing you know sunk costs are not necessarily sunk costs you've still learned something from it that can guide towards the direction you want to go yeah awesome thank you fantastic points all right, going through some of the rest of these, um, looking at our organization from different perspectives, subsystems give you more insight and control, allow for holistic approach to problem solving. Learning would be key, uh, more holistic and dynamic. Emergent strategy rather than top down, likely originate strategy more coupled with the external environment the organization interacts with voices of people with lived experience. Yeah, it's a really interesting one too, rather than, I guess, imposing strategy or your thoughts, um, you know, on group or population, having kind of people come in, making it more of a participatory process. Um, does anyone want to speak to that one? that one was me um <laughs> i think we in organizations we particularly the voluntary sector we talk about 
participation and lived experience we've run a few peer-led research projects specifically but that doesn't necessarily then feed into the strategy so i think the whole kind of spectrum of how we do lived experience and involvement and participation needs a really clear framework so that it's done genuinely i kind of mm -hmm. hear people talking about using lived experience and i'm usually quite uncomfortable with using <laughs> lived experience uh, and just making sure the strategy really involves people that it's aimed to help mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah i think even just the language of using you know lived yeah. experience is kind of it goes against though the point <laughs> yeah, of it to, to begin with yeah awesome thank you for speaking up again we always you know, love participation and dialogue. <laughs> and there's this one that also someone put in a thumbs up icon. Strategy would become an adaptive, nonlinear process with many more voices, feedback and inputs driven by theory of change, more balanced outcomes, inclusive to real social and environmental objectives as they become drivers of engagement and embedded in a renewed and emerging purpose. Great. So Looks like this one just didn't take one aspect, but tried to, you know, combine, you know, different aspects of a strategy together if, um, you know, wh whoever wrote that note wants to speak up. Yeah, that one, I tried to put everything into Friday yeah. afternoon <laughs> and dream up how it could be done properly. Mm -hmm. Not not sure whether I hit it, but, but I took that process view of how strategy is done today. So I still speak a bit in the old world language of today's strategy and twist it around into how it could be done a better way, uh, being systemic at the heart or at the core mm -hmm. of it. That, that's yeah. basically I, the idea of, a, of that long sentence. Yeah, I mean, that's a great way of approaching it. I mean, even just using the language that we use today is still kind of necessary to frame the context of the changes you need to make <laughs> in terms of you know being able to transition. Um, yeah, no, it's you had some interesting stuff in there in terms of, you know, what like the approach or processes would look like in terms of being adaptive, uh, and incorporating feedback and then kind of looking at, um, you know, objectives and, you know, external environment in a more holistic way um, that all gears towards not only strategy, but also purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So I think I went through most of the notes that were in here, but some of the themes that I was seeing was, um, seeing was um thinking in a more holistic way um in general around strategy which <laughs> you know makes sense around systems thinking so um you know looking to not only like externally um about like you know different aspects your strategy might be impacting um and how you might need to adjust your strategy to um what you're learning or how the situation's adapting but also looking internally of how your organization's working um and using that as well in order to achieve your strategy and, you know, being, being cognizant of how those interplay, um, you know, using some you know, systems concepts in terms of looking at like leverage points or, you know, what's actually most impactful here, like root causes rather than strategies that might be recycled and not actually getting to where you want to go. And then also having an adaptive process um, where you're constantly um, evaluating and really valuing learning more than just trying to hit certain metrics in order to adapt and learn and, and adjust. So yeah, awesome. Thanks for your participation. Really, really great stuff here. Um, so then I'll pass it over to John for the next question. Great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sanjana. So um, we, we now know what we're doing. So let's go to the third question. And the third question is, how might a systems approach change organizational structure? And that, of course, is in its widest sense in terms of the way that an organization is structured, but also how the way that departments are structured and the way that we structure between each other. So if we keep it at that wide sense, uh, we'll give a few minutes and then we'll start to go through the, the what people have written.
Okay, so as people are still writing, I'm going to be talking, um, reading through some of these aloud. And um, just to put a bit of commentary on maybe a bit of a theme that's coming out. One big theme that's coming out is about the ch move from vertical to horizontal. And um, that's interesting. Leads to more horizontal communication with a flatter organization with people working cross functionally. How might a systems approach change or uh, how? can help redefine role and purpose of leadership and management. Uh, that's a slightly different comment there because that's now going back up into the hierarchy and demonstrating that it will affect them. And there's one there with regard to power, really, which is, is her role will change from command to orchestrate and engage. He will be a she more often than not. Okay. So while people are still writing, um, the person that wrote can help redefine role and purpose of leadership and management. Can you unmute yourself, please, and just uh, talk a little bit more about what you meant by that? There's one question here, which isn't a comment, it's a question. How will it change the way teams interact? How about someone who, who wrote that? And did you have an idea when you wrote that? Or was that an open question? I actually wrote that one, John. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. um, just as a way to like another way of like framing the, the question in case, um, okay. you know, Okay, and we've got one here, which means the, the the way that leaders and managers will control systems will be very different. In what way will it be different, do you think? Person that wrote that one? I mean, certainly from this one here, where it mentions command and control to orchestrate and engage, he will be a she more often than not. I really like that one. That's uh, some of these, uh, although they're simple, one of the things that I'm seeing, although they're right, they're just a paragraph. There's a lot in some cases within those paragraphs that would take us so far in terms of a discussion. And obviously, because this is just an exploration, um one of the things this will do will help us to discuss more of these in the future feedback loops of communication ideas insights and guide strategy creating more informal mesh network structures so here we have a comment about informality as opposed to formal so that's changing the hierarchy, not by removing the hierarchy, but maybe changing the nature of how of how the hierarchy actually um, works. There is a view with some people that systemic thinking is about removing the hierarchy, but I don't see much of that here. So that's interesting. It's about changing it. It's about changing culture. It's about changing communication. It's about changing control and power. 
Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you want to say something there? Yeah, that mm was was me, right? Because I was so inspired by the image that you've put there that that I took the liberty of putting my sticky notes right into the image. Yeah. Not to destroy it, but to basically try make the point. So when I saw the person in the middle, the boss being in red, right, it provoked the idea of saying, who is he or she? And I was like, ah, well, that person with these new abilities to engage and orchestrate, uh, more often than not, will be a woman because they have these abilities. It's, it's right there. And actually, when we go higher, uh, first I wanted to put the hiring sticky next to the boss. Then I said, no, that's wrong. Someone else will hire. And whom will they hire? Well, they will hire not for the hard skills, but accordingly they would hire for, for something I call a cultural fit. Because that is what matters. And then they can give them the, the hard skills later on once they are onboarded. Hence, the hierarchy is as flat as possible. And then all these people in the organization will collaborate in very different ways. Hmm. Not, not in the ways we do projects today, like in consulting. It, it, it would appear that that's where it's decentralized. No, actually it's not. It's just because the, the business model. Hmm. Though, though I, I, I acknowledge there, there are examples where they try live to this new paradigm. Yeah, of course, but they're, they're not invented to be like that. They're still hired for the hard skills that they bring and that's what's being sold as services. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Bernd. Very interesting there. And I, I really like that. You know, we've used the we've used the diagram. You've, you've used the diagram to make the comment and um, it just shows the power of graphics and pictures um and again going back to the one over here with a with a one thumbs up about more of a cellular structure um and it allows the organization to be treated as a whole so this is really interesting because we've got different comments but they are all so much related and they all seem to move away from the traditional model of when you ask something this is i find this really interesting when you go into an organization say ah oh, what does your organization look like the most common answer is here is a picture of the hierarchy and you look at it and for some people that's very important and for others and according to this that's still there but it's not it certainly doesn't tell us very much about the organization so um fascinating right what we're going to do now is i'm going to hand over to sanjana for the fourth question um so sanjana off for you awesome yeah so let's move on to the last question before we go into breakout rooms for more general discussion about your experiences and thoughts of um systems thinking and systems change in organizations so you know the drill the last question we have here is how my systems approach change the way that organizations deliver their services so here we've gone from we started um this workshop with um purpose then we went to strategy and then we went to organizing and now we've ended here on services so same same deal as before um we we'll have a few minutes for people to jot down their thoughts and then we'll go over and review
So feel free to continue writing, but um, just in the interest of time, I'm going to start reviewing what people have put down. So we have one on proper planning of service capacity and quality with timely feedback from customers, better understanding of what's needed to retain customers and employees. Okay, cool. Interesting. I'm, I'm curious about who wrote these ones because I'm assuming it's the same person. Um, also, what does, I guess, what does proper planning look like, I guess, in a systems context? I, I wrote both of those. And proper planning mm -hmm. means that we know um, how many people we need to serve the customers that we have coming in and to give them the quality service that we wish to give our hiring practices in particular um, and training practices. Mm -hmm. As far as um, the better understanding of what's needed to bring customers and employees, if we fail to have the right people there to support our customers, and if we aren't supporting our employees, we're going to lose customers. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I'm hearing it's like both being driven by who the service is benefiting and then planning according to that. Um, and then, you know, the flip side of like, obviously supporting the people who are delivering the services. Yes. Okay. Awesome. We have one, be aware of our living, of impacts on our living systems for any choices made in terms of products, clients, needs, delivery, logistics. Okay, that one's also great. Um, someone wants to speak to it. I'm thinking, at least from what I heard around the space, um, you know, organizations transitioning to more of circular models um, and understanding like end of life cycle doesn't mean that the product's gonna disappear. It's gonna have <laughs> some sort of ecosystem impact or you know, impact on people, et cetera. Any comments on that one? If not, I'll continue to what other people have written. Okay, one, we are not here to solve your problem, but to find ways to address sustainable solutions for the whole ecosystem. I think this is interesting. So it's, you know, rather than closing off and, you know, focusing on a specific point, thinking about, you know, how maybe addressing that point might have spillover effects. Um, in the greater ecosystem, does does anyone want to speak to that one? Uh, yeah, hi Sanjana, that was me who had put it up, and mm -hmm. uh, so here we go with not the thought process of okay, I am I am a solution provider to you, but uh, more in the terms of like how is it affecting uh, not just them but their immediate uh, stakeholders as well, and then uh, uh, we um, you know. Uh, create a uh, what do you say a collaborative solutioning to the mm -hmm. problem rather than you know find the solutions directly yeah that's awesome it's like actually understanding and addressing the problem rather just moving than moving the problem <laughs> from one area you know to yes, another yes you're right mm -hmm. yeah that's what okay great um just going through the other notes we have here, systems approaches effectuate faster responses to changes in the environment, allowing for better service optimization. Um, you measure, so that's a bit more of like um, the adaption that, um, like adaptive and kind of assessing how, um, assessing impacts and learning that we've also kind of seen um, through the other questions. New measures would have to be defined with custom, with example customers, which would be measured per feedback loop, tangible and intangible, unlocking insights. So broadening the scope um, of what's measured, and this is also interesting in terms of you know what what's measured is usually you know where people would pay their attention to, and um, you know it's how you're able to learn and make progress as well. Does anyone want to speak to that one? Yes, I can. Um... Mm -hmm. It, it also entails that there's maybe a conversation and between human beings and not just a mouse click, for example, to give an mm -hmm. example. So that's part of this idea of feedback loops. And actually at, at the heart of it sits that these measures of success within in my example of a customer, um, they have defined that before. So there is a there is a criteria for the company 
that we're looking at, but also for the customers, how they rate the success of, of that particular service or product. And mm. that would, would be measured. So that's a conversation. And the, the measure, I don't give an example for that, but it would be different than what we might want to measure today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay. So we're closing up on the hour. So I'm just going to run through the last couple here. Service outcomes can be, since service outcomes can be subjective based on recipient's experience, focusing on systems approach will allow an organization to more easily adapt to each customer's appearance and plan ahead by creating journey maps using personas and utilizing services. Yeah. Um, yeah, does anyone want to speak to that note? Um, and that might be, I think, the last one that we have uh, time to go over for, for this question. So we are done with uh, the four questions, right? Yes, I can just provide a small yeah. recap on the last one. I guess what, like the other sticky notes that I've seen, I've also seen kind of a common theme of, um, you know, focusing on like the human aspect of it, not necessarily making, you know, metrics and stuff um, be the be all end all. Um, then we also have, you know, continuous learning and improvement, um, being able to taking a systemic approach, being able to, you know, deliver higher quality um, and with like greater effectiveness. Um, but yeah, I think that should be it for, for these ones. Adriana, if you want to take us to the next um, phase. Yeah, so now uh, we are going to uh, divide us uh, in uh, four breakout rooms uh, where we would ask you to tell us about the challenge that you have in your organization. And uh, then uh, maybe we can do it in 15 minutes. So you can discuss with your peers about the challenge that you have in your organization. And um, then we will come back and you will be able to post about what you've been discussing. And finally, we are going to wrap up. So let me just do the breakout yeah. rooms. Yeah. That was yeah, so there'll be four breakout rooms, and then if you're number one, go into a room, the board that says number one. If you're number two, go to the board number two. So on. Okay. You want me to create them? I'm uh, creating yeah. no, I'm doing now. Uh, you you might want to do it automatically, but yeah. Yeah, I did it automatically. Okay. Good.
the ones that are remaining here in the chat, uh, like in the main room, do you need any help or? Um, I'm not sure if you're still with us or if you have any technical problems to join the breakout rooms.
Hi there, I just wanted to know there are three people here. Are you, are you all okay? So they will be back in uh, uh, 60 seconds, in a minute. So uh, we are going to ask uh, each one of them. Great. So now I think we are all back. Um, what we're going to do now is so we have uh, one, two minutes for each um, breakout room to share what you discussed with uh, the main group. And finally, we will be wrapping up. So um, I don't know if, if you have a representative, uh, a person who would speak for each of the breakout rooms or if uh, different people would like to, to share. Uh, but first we go with, with breakout room one. Um, I see that you're, yeah, if, if you don't have time to put it on sticky notes, um, you can just speak and uh, yeah, feel free, feel free to un unmute yourself and just to, to share. Yeah, I'll share the link in a second. Adriana, would that be us for room one? Um, well, it was uh, it was me. Um, and, oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> we we were too busy talking to. I, I I didn't pay attention to which room we got through. We got placed uh, into. Sorry. I I understand that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was, just uh, see, it was myself and Agnes in this in that room. So uh, I think thankfully both of us were from the same sector, nonprofit. She also works with um, the development sector and I'm also from there. So we found a lot of, of course, uh, similar things to talk about. And uh, like our sticky note says, like my, my trouble is, you know, how as my organization grows and becomes larger, how to close the gap between uh, the, the way systems thinking is believed uh, uh, at the uh, grassroots level versus the executive leadership, even, even though there's a lot of empathy and there's a lot of you know, participatory uh, decision-making happening, despite that as, as the larger we grow, the, the gap seems to be increasing a lot and we don't seem to be speaking the same language. And uh, that's the kind of struggle we're sitting with right now. We're at a cusp of from, from say a 50 member organization, we are now around like 300, 350. So I think we are trying to manage that change uh, in terms of uh, system thinking. So that, that was what I had to say. And um, Agnes, please uh, fill in. Yes, Th thank you, Rama. I think one of the things that um, we were talking about is like people who are uh, 
living um, with the lived experiences, they actually tell stories that are kind of like in practice systems thinking, but it's not in the language of how it's theorized or in the framework that sometimes um, a theory uh, or it doesn't match the language, but if you listen deeply enough, it, they're actually telling the, the stories of systems thinking. And sometimes it could be missed if you're not paying attention. I think the other thing that we touched on is that as organizations grow, there's this assumption that you have to follow sort of like the model that governance has to be this way, HR has to be this way, departments have to function in this manner. Um, and it sometimes takes somebody who can give them a different way, a different worldview to think about what those structures could look like for them to think about those structures in a different way. So I think that's what, um, what is meant by just really a different form of leadership. One that's, that's not command and control, but somebody who can influence kind of the structures also within an institution to, to be different. Those are, I think, the things that we talked about. Anything I missed, Rama? <laughs> okay. No, you perfect. That was. <laughs> okay, so then, uh, maybe we can go next with the breakout room two. I have here already sticky notes. Who wants to speak? Hi there. I, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, in our group, uh, we, the three of us, all, all of us were uh, in the business world. Um, uh, both uh, uh, two of us were uh, in the cyber profession, Kim and I, and, and uh, are um, trying to, to get my notes here. But uh, sorry, I'm not very, uh, I'm, I'm new to this. But uh, um, we, we had some interesting discussions around uh, the value of systems uh, uh, thinking to how we approach uh, some of the problems in our, in our spaces, especially respective to uh, you know, we talked a little bit about cybersecurity problems as well as business uh, challenges and um, uh, also um, an interesting, uh, some projects with, with start, start, starting up some new organizations in Native American spaces uh, uh, and, and looking at how, you know, uh, those organizations are, are, are govern, govern themselves. Uh, and are maybe perhaps more aligned uh, to those those cultures, uh, and you know those those kind of questions as well. I'm, uh, I'm does that capture the fidelity there, uh, team? You nailed it. Thank you. Okay. Um, breakout room three. Who wants to speak? Don't be shy. We basically began um, this by discussing um, that that my particular organization has just begun the journey of systems thinking and that approach um, within our organization. And um, while we are in the, still in the beginning stages, we have seen um, impacts across our customers' service. Um, outcomes and their feedback has been greatly improved as opposed to what historically it has been and it has allowed us um, to recognize the fact that when we implement change in one of the sub programs it unintentionally impacts outlying sub programs which can cause negative um, customer experiences. So it's it's allowed us to be more holistic and just you know approaching any types of changes um, more dynamically um, by involving all potentially impacted programs. Okay. Um, do you want to share anything else, or we can go with the last room? Um, yeah, thanks, Adriana. I mean, I come from a slightly different um, background. So I work in in HE in university. So I look into streamline systems and processes that students use, but also what staff use 
as an interface. So it's good to be part of this forum just to see what good practices out there and what other colleagues and members here are doing to improve, you know, uh, service provision, especially now that from my background that students are considered as customers under the UK policy and, you know, they have a demand of, you know, of an exceptional service. So we're thinking through how we can streamline and provide a robust service provision through the systems that students use, but also the systems that uh, colleagues and departments use to support students. Yeah. Right. So you're part of the breakout room four or? Three, sorry. Okay, okay, thank you. So now we can uh, briefly go with the uh, breakout room four. I can give a, a quick recap of what we talked about. Um, Bert and Nod were in this group, um, and you know they were mentioning how um, one of the biggest issues that they're seeing is kind of organizations not understanding the interdependency of like what's outside um, the organization and like how that impacts what's inside the organization, and vice versa, and how um, or it should be thought of more of a garden in a way and kind of using that analogy in terms of the purpose would be serving living life strategy kind of relates to seasons. Um, we also talked about how organizations might not care about shifting to a systemic approach or to more of a garden unless it affects uh, profits in some way and hopefully trying to get on the path of being more genuine where, you know, they might try to cultivate a garden for profit, but eventually start to value the garden itself. Um, and kind of having employees um, and kind of spreading kind of that, uh, like a more democratic way of like working or um, bringing in employees values as, as a way of kind of making that that transition. Um, but yeah, burnt odd. Um, hmm. if you guys wanted to say anything or, you know, explain a bit more. No, you explained nicely. I think you touched on all these points. Very nice, very good insights from the breakout rooms and also from the questions. Um, so just to remind you, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this uh, session is part of a series of sessions that we will be hosting every month. Um, so you're you're welcome to, to join us uh, next month. And here in the uh, you can find the details to, for, to join the group on the platform, the organizations group. And also you can follow us on LinkedIn for more updates. And um, here we will be sharing the recording of the event um, as well as uh, in the in the platform. Um, so here also you can um, take a sticky and put your like a feedback. Um, so you, we can take it in account for the next session. And thank you, everyone. Yeah, maybe we can wrap up here and you can still post uh, your feedback. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And yeah, feel free to reach out and uh, to post your, your thoughts on the mirror board. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the weekend. Oh, I have a question. What uh, would the recording be posted? Yes, it will. Um, I'll just find you the link now. Uh, one second. The um, the recording will be available uh, at this link on our YouTube channel for the organizations group. So it'll be there um today later today or tomorrow you'll find it in the chat then